In this video, we're going to look at comparing von Neumann architecture and Harvard architecture. As mentioned in the previous videos, programs require instructions and data. This is fetched from main memory through the data bus. This method is known as von Neumann architecture, as this is a method in which the processor is built as designed by John von Neumann, where data and instructions are stored in one main memory. We'll look at this in more detail later on, but that's the core concept for now behind von Neumann architecture. An alternative method to von Neumann architecture was later introduced. This is known as Harvard architecture. The difference is that Harvard uses a separate memory for data and separate memory for instructions. This requires a separate set of buses for data and instructions. The rest of the process is pretty much the same. So why do we care to have Harvard architecture? Well, as data has its own bus and instructions have their own bus, these items can be transmitted a lot quicker. So a program running on Harvard architecture can be executed faster. Harvard architecture is widely used on systems such as ticket machines, smartphones, consoles, and more. In fact, even Opti from Expo 2020 uses Harvard architecture. But of course, with separate memory and separate buses, Harvard will be a little bit more expensive than Newman, which is why von Newman is still widely used today. Devices like the ones just mentioned also use a process called Digital Signal Processing, or DSP for short. This is where continuous real-world data, such as audio or video, are collected and compressed in order to make the process faster. Chips which work with DSP often use up far less power due to the compressed data, which actually is what makes this process suitable for devices like phones. And that's everything you need to know about comparing von Neumann architecture with Harvard architecture.